Since they move camp about once a month, the Avenka masters of packing everything. They did this in under an hour from start to finish, and they packed the children too. This is the Avenk version of a disposable nappy for the twins Alec and Misha. In winter, wet clothes freeze instantly, which is hardly comfortable on long reindeer journeys, so the dry rotten wood soaks up the wetness. When they were children, Sergei and Valya used to travel in these very cradles, just as their twins do today. One of the biggest things that struck me about the Evenk is that their children rarely cry. They're incredibly content. But what do they do if anyone gets sick? We don't get sick, was all they said. And it's just as well. The hospital is a week's travel by reindeer away. Misha is totally immobile in his cradle. That hoop over his face acts as a kind of roll bar in case he falls off the reindeer. There are no roads here, only tracks that Evenk families have ridden for generations. They have no idea of distance, but they love to travel. In fact, there's an Evenk saying that the best thing in life is living for the next place. Of course, the great thing about living in a chum is that when you move, there's no mortgage to worry about. Just pick your new site and chop down a dozen poles. These are the only three poles to be tied together. They form a tripod and all the others just get lent on top. Since Siberia got its market economy, life has become harder for the Evenk. Under the communist regime, helicopters flew in every week and the Evenk could send furs and pelts to the local town to sell, buying tools and summer clothes with the money they made. Then the helicopters were free. Now they have to pay and the flights are hugely expensive. But they love their life and their forest. The children have to be rounded up like reindeer, even lassoed in some cases to be sent off to the state boarding school. And like his father and uncles before him, young Slava here will almost certainly return from his schooling to the tiger to live and work. And because they still have the knowledge of how to live in the forest, no matter what happens in the rest of Russia, their way of life can survive.